Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Legends Battles. In this video, we're gonna give our pizzas items that they can use. Now items are just actions like anything else, but they're shared by the whole team and you can only use them once. Often items are positive things like health recovery or status recovery, but really since they're just actions, you can make them do whatever you want. The starting code is linked below if you've missed anything. Let's get started. Here's where we left our game in the previous video. Our submission menu is up and working and we've got a list of attacks that our pizza knows. Uh, but when I open the items here, there's nothing there. So let's go ahead and give our pizza some items that it can use. Now items are gonna be actions just like any other battle move. So I'm gonna pop open actions.js and at the bottom here, I'm gonna start a new section for items. Give us some space here. Our first one's gonna be an item that recovers status. So say that you have a negative status and you wanna rip it off your pizza, you can uh, use this item and it'll do that. We're gonna call this a heating lamp and give it a name and description. All of our actions have descriptions now, by the way, and target type friendly so our pizza knows to use it on itself rather than the enemy. Our success steps can basically do the same thing that our status setting moves does. So we can take this one here from saucy status. I'm gonna copy this over, bring it down to our recover status move and just change that state change action. Instead of setting status to a new object, we wanna set it to null, null. And now we can play with the messaging a little bit. So caster uses a heating lamp and then maybe another text message that's like feeling fresh now normally each pizza has a reference to the actions that it knows how to do items are going to be a little bit different though because they're not always available to the pizza you have to have one of these items in your inventory to be able to use it and once you do use it it needs to be removed from your inventory too so let's add some kind of concept of inventories to battle js right under our combatants in our active combatants i'm going to make a new array on the battle itself this array is going to be called this.items, and it's going to contain entries of items that look like this. Each item has an action ID that will refer back to the action that should be used. It's going to have a unique instance, and this is how we're going to know how to delete the exact item that was used. And we'll also specify which team this item belongs to. I like organizing the items in a flat list like this, so we can kind of add a second item here. Say the enemy also had an item like this because it naturally gives us a lot of flexibilities on cool features we can do with items. Say we wanna take an item and flip it to the enemy team, like maybe an action that steals an item, it's just a matter of updating this field here. Or if you had some ability where the player can use enemy items, we don't have to mess with like looking at two different lists, they're all just right here. The UI will take care of offering items that can be used by each team. And let's go ahead and just say that the player has two of these. The other benefit of listing out instances like this is that you can keep track of extra data on the items. Like if you care about when the player received this item or maybe who gave it to them, maybe it has a little bit of augmentation on it that it like is shiny or it does a little bit something extra than a normal type of item. You have space to track all that stuff right on the instance here. And of course, just like our combatants right now, we're starting the battle with a hard-coded list, but in the future, these will be dynamically created by what the player has in their inventory, and on the flip side, whatever the enemy brings to the table as far as items goes. Okay, let's start populating our submission menu with the items that this caster has to use. So when we construct it, I'm gonna pass in items, and then we need to find our battle event that runs new submission menu. So that's in battle event JS. And here, when we're providing the same caster and enemy, we can go ahead and also provide items. So we'll say items is this.battle.items. Over here in submission menu JS, we're getting our items in, but that's gonna give us all of them. Now we wanna filter down to only this caster's items. And we also wanna organize them a little bit to not show duplicate options. So say that you have two of the same item, just like we do here. I have two of these item recover statuses. We don't wanna offer two different options because they're really the same thing. Instead, we're gonna wrap them up as one option and then include the quantity of how many of this item type you have. This is just some extra niceness with the UI because it's kind of annoying to have many options that all do the same thing. So back in submission menu JS up here, I'm gonna start a new quantity map. And it's gonna start as a key value store. We're gonna iterate through each item and if the item.team matches our caster team, then we can go ahead and add it to our list. So we'll say quantity map using the item's action ID as the key. It's gonna be a new object. We're gonna start with quantity one and then also tack on the action ID itself. We're also gonna include the instance ID of this first item that we found the menu will then send this one up when we end up using this item. 
Now, as we iterate through our items here, we might find a duplicate action ID. And so what we need to do is kind of check to see if we've seen this action ID in our map before. So we're gonna check for an existing item by looking at the quantity map at the key that we're gonna add. And if it exists, then we can do something else. But if it doesn't exist, then we're gonna go ahead and add it to the map, which is the code that we put in here. Let me clean this up. So now if it did exist, we can just say existing.quantity adds one. Finally, at the end of all this iterating, let's go ahead and just assign this.items to all of the values in this map that we created. So object.values, quantity map. Let's go ahead and console this out and just see how it landed. Making sure we use the full item word up here. When I launch the battle now, I get a console log that's got one entry in it. And we see action ID, it's got the right action on it. Quantity two, so it's wrapped them up into this one entry. And then finally, it's got the instance ID of our first match. So now we can take this and actually show it as an option in our items submenu here. Back in the code, we'll clean up our console log here and come down to our get pages method. This is where we construct all the options we have. We're gonna follow the exact same pattern that we did with attacks, but we're gonna have to make a few tweaks for the item. So I'll copy this over, replace our comment. We'll update this to spread through this.items, change our key to item, the action ID on the item. So now the name and description of the item should show up fine. Here when we submit the action through the handler, we wanna also include the instance ID. Remember, we're kind of set up for that here. And so what we'll do is say item.instanceID to pass that through. And then in menu submit here, we also wanna make sure that we're passing that up as part of the submission. So here we'll add instance ID to make sure that's included. Finally, we're gonna utilize that write feature that we set up in the previous video so that we can show the quantity along with each item there. So write's just gonna return the character X and then items quantity. Booting this up, I'll choose items here. We can see our heating lamp item is coming through and the description is all wired up and working. The right side is working too, but it's horribly unstyled. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Let's look for keyboard menu CSS, find our right section here. I'm just gonna add in some styles. We're gonna reduce the font size. We're gonna kind of flex center everything in this container to just sit in the middle there. And then we'll push it a little bit away from the right side. So let's see this. And now it sits a little more nicely in the layout. Back in submission menu.js here, we can see in menu submit, we are passing through the instance ID. Let's go ahead and handle that on the turn cycle side so that when we see an instance ID come through, we can go ahead and remove that from the items array. Because once you use this item, you can't use it again, it'll be gone. So in turn cycle JS, right after we receive our submission, we can go ahead and check and see if we got an instance ID too. So if submission.instance ID, we're gonna reset our items. So this.battle.items is gonna be this.battle.items, but filtered to make sure that the item doesn't match the instance ID that was used. Now let's go ahead and add a status to our initial pizza to make sure that this status removing item is working correctly. So I'll come up to player one pizza status. We'll just hard code this uh, to start saucy. So the battle starts, we have the saucy status. I'll use items, heating lamp. We get our success events. So I use a heating lamp. The status disappears, the state change worked. I'm feeling fresh, let the enemy do their thing. So now it's my turn again. When I hit items, you see that our quantity is now reduced back to one. So we successfully are deleting items after using them. Back in actions.js here, let's add one more item type to kind of round this video out. We add a new item called recover HP. We're going to call it Parmesan, like you're sprinkling Parmesan on yourself. Target type friendly, as most items are. Our message is going to be we sprinkle on some Parmesan. We're going to recover HP by 10 and then show a little message that's like, you recovered HP. Next, let's give this item to our pizza to use. So we'll pop over to battle, make another one of these. And now with this in place, we should see it appear in our items menu. Now when I open up the items menu, I see Parmesan is appearing because it's in our inventory. I'll go ahead and use this one. Sprinkles on some Parmesan, recovers HP, and I even get more HP because I'm feeling saucy. 
And now that it's my turn again, when I open up items, you can see that Parmesan is gone because we already used it. So that's it for items in this video. Our submission menu that we created in the previous video really set us up for success here. Uh, I encourage you to get in here and create as many item types as you want. It's really just a matter of adding more actions. So get in here, get creative, have the items do different things, go crazy. In the next video, we're gonna start filling out this swap option here, where if you wanna swap to a different pizza on the fly, you'll be able to do that. Also, if your pizza dies in action, we'll be able to swap in with an alive one to keep the battle going. So that's it for this video. Thank you as always for watching to the end. Again, if you're getting value out of this, I really appreciate it when you subscribe for the whole series and then hit that like button. And if you're working on a game, remember to come join us in Discord. Tell us about it. We'd love to have you there. Thank you so much. Catch you in the next video.